position, exactly. Go ahead, start again. At the head of the sofa, which was to the west, there was a Prince Albert coat folded up. That was placed on top of, I think, an afghan, some knit cover, and on that was placed a small sofa cushion with a piece of the tidy on it. On that rested Mr. Borden's head. His two feet were on the floor, and he lay in the position as if he had been asleep. Have you ever made any experiments at any time as to the degree of force it takes to crush the skull of a man? No, sir. Never in your life? No, sir. Have you ever made any study of it? I studied it in the usual way, which comes to a physician to measure the degree of force it takes to fracture the force in the living. To take a human skull, to see how much force it would take to break it, I've never done it. Not with any kind of instrument? No, sir. You've never had any experience in a matter of that kind that enables you to base your judgment upon the degree of force that it would take? The skull is bone. We know about the degree of force it takes to break a bone. We know the thickness of the skull at a certain point, and I do not think it requires any previous trying or experimenting to know how much force it takes. Irrespective of the weapon used? In my answer, I was going to designate what, in my opinion, a hatchet of a certain weight that would break the skull at the point where this was fractured and broken would not break it at any other part. In other words, a person falling from a height and striking on the top of his head does not generally break the top of the head. It breaks the base of the skull, where the force is directed, because the top of the skull is so much thicker than the base.